Hi everyone, I'm Monica and I'm back and in this video, if you're not here already, you know it has been 12 months since I had my SRS surgery done in Thailand and let's get into it. So this video, I wanted to address a few topics so I don't want it to be too lengthy but I'll try to break it down to my recovery process, my upcake, my updates, what's happening, and a little bit of my experience in Thailand from the very beginning. I wrote some notes, so if you see my eyes wandering off screen for a little bit, I'm just kind of reminding myself of key points that I wanted to address in this video. So first, I live in Ontario, Canada, and my gender confirmation surgery was partially paid for by my provincial insurance. I'm a unique situation and not everybody that gets surgery would have theirs covered out of country by insurance, but I did meet specific protocol which allowed me to leave the country and get my surgery paid for. I did have to pay for my out-of-pocket expenses like traveling and accommodations outside of the time that I was in the hospital, but that was that. I started my process Four months or I started my insurance process and booking my surgery four months before I left for Thailand and bring it back to current day. I left I think on the 28th of July in 2018 and my surgery was July 5th 2018. My surgery I did have, when I was in Thailand, I did have a bit of like choice when I could have had my surgery, but because it was a long weekend in Canada at the time, Canada Day weekend and Memorial Day or the 4th of July in the States, I didn't really want my, I wanted to give myself extra time in case there were any hiccups. And in my case, there were a few hiccups, which I've never really talked about, but as I did say that I do have complicated medical history so me getting that procedure done required a little bit of extra funding to be released from the government but because it was a long weekend in Canada shortly after I got there I didn't actually find out if I was getting the surgery confirmed until the day of my surgery. I was getting other surgeries done at the same time such as my breast augmentation and my Adam's apple reduction surgery. I had that one done a week after my SRS, but that was, but like my purpose was going to Thailand was to get my gender confirmation surgery. And if you haven't known that already, I had my surgery done by Dr. Kamal in Thailand. So at this point, I've done all my paperwork. I have planned, I've had my passport. I purchased travel insurance for a month. I was in Thailand for a month. I, at this point now, going back, I left on the 28th. It was a 23 hour flight. I flew from Toronto to Montreal and then to Tokyo and then from Tokyo to Bangkok. I was picked up at the airport by a, one of their shuttle drivers that was hired through the hotel. And then I arrived sometime after midnight. It was unfortunate because I think the driver was waiting for like an hour to two hours before they picked me up because I had to go through security, immigration, customs or whatever. So that part was done. I met the driver. I landed, I think at like sometime after midnight. And then on Saturday, the next day, I had my consultation around 9 a.m., 10 a.m. with the doctor. It was a pretty beef, brief conversation, consultation, but I was glad. I was able to confirm that I wanted to get everything done that I wanted. And then it was my weekend. The hospital is closed on Sunday, so it was pretty quiet. I did a little bit of exploring in the area, but I didn't wander too far away from the hotel. And then going from that, it was just trying to deal with 
people back in Canada to find out the status of me getting my insurance to release that extra money so that all of my surgeries would have been covered. Like my laryngeal, like my tracheal shave, that was something that I paid for out of pocket, so I wasn't going to rely on insurance for that. Like I couldn't rely on insurance for that, but I still wanted to make sure. So I was emailing my doctor, calling my doctor, but because it was Canada Day weekend, everything was closed. And dealing with the 12 hour time frame, when the hospital closes, everything in here was open. So I was really fortunate that the administration of the hospital that I was working with took the hospital phone home and were calling people in Canada at like 3 a.m. to make sure that my insurance was fully funded and I wouldn't have had to pay out of pocket, which was great. So I had my consultation and then everything, I signed paperwork. I did pay the stuff that I needed to pay for out of pocket. And then going back to it, how much did I spend when I was in Thailand? I've done a video on this already. I did an entire budget. I did an entire playlist on my transition surgeries if you are new to my channel. But out of pocket, I recall spending between $1,800 and $2,200 on my accommodation, breakfast, and out of pocket medical expenses that I had to pay for, which would have been like my dilating and blood testing and all of the basic stuff that I had to do. I also had to pay for two mental health assessments when I was there, which was also included in that fee that were not covered. Before I left, I did send them copies of all of my blood work and I had that done here, but for the hospital's own policies, you have to redo it for that. And I think then on my day five, I was brought down to my hospital room that I was going to be in for the next week. I set that up, I put my phone, my phone charger, eye mask, lip gloss, and I th what else did I have? I, I think that was pretty much it beside me on like the table beside the hospital bed, which I was going to be in for five days. Before the surgery, nurses came in and they made sure everything was shaved. They gave me an enema and then they wheeled me into the surgery room around 5 p.m. I signed waivers. I also inspected my breast implants, that they were going to be the same ones that I was looking for. And I had my surgery. I woke up and pretty much the rest of that is history. My surgery pain, and I was on painkillers for two days after my surgery, and I had my breast augmentation done at the same time as my SRS. So the pain from my SRS was very minimal, and I mean very minimal. I was a bit nauseous from the anesthesia, but given that I was under for more than five hours, I believe, to get breast augmentation and SRS done at the same time, there was a lot of anesthesia in my system, and that made me feel nauseous when I woke up. My recovery from that point forward, dilating twice a day for an hour each time for the first three months, and upsizing my dilator every two weeks. Within, I think, two months, I was already on my largest size dilator. And I think I did a video on this as well, and I quickly switched out and bought my own dilators that were a little bit more comfortable for me and easier to maintain. After that, from month three to month six, I was now only dilating for one hour a day, once a day. And then from month six to month nine, I was dilating for half an hour a day, once a day, and then now from month nine to 12, I dilate for 30 minutes every two days. I was sick for a little bit, and so I only I missed a week of dilating completely, but now I dilate once every other day for half an hour. From roughly month two to month three, you're able to replace dilating with having like penetrative intercourse, if that's not TMI. And then going from that, in my dilating process, I also clean that area 
I will do an entire separate video on my SR breast implant recovery 12 year mark and I'll upload that likely next week. So I have dilated my dilation and my recovery at this point is fine. Any visible scars that I did have have pretty much healed and if they are there they now look more like stretch marks than scars and I'm happy with that. I have very pale skin and not sure if it really picks up properly on camera but when I get any sort of cut or bruise it's pretty much a permanent mark on my skin so I'm really lucky that I don't have like red sharpie lines or red permanent marker lines along that part of my body and now let's see if there's anything else I wanted to add to this video Okay, so going back, I didn't really have any fears going into my surgery. I was kind of... A... It was weird because I didn't really have any, like, response at all in getting surgery. I was just kind of, like, numb. It's like, hey, want this, and then it's done. But now, like, going back, I'm, like, really happy that it was done. And that's me, like, growing into my body. I'm kind of excited now thinking about some of the people that I have met when I was in the hospital, which I really didn't talk about. I met one or two nice people when I was there. No, you know, think about a few people. I met a famous trans celebrity when I was in Thailand and I've kept in touch with them. I met another person that was taking care of another trans person and a mother and daughter who also had various surgeries and I've been able to keep in touch with them. I did meet another person when I was there that was really great and helpful to me when I was in the hospital, but they completely disappeared after they left Thailand, and that's so be it. I did, when I was had my surgery, for the first four months before my surgery and for the first three months after my surgery, I did have multiple Reddit posts on my entire experience and those got a lot of feedback. However, since then I have deleted all of my Reddit posts. When I saw my friend Clover over Pride Weekend, I was kind of excited because we were talking about this and she was even saying that she thinks she may have read my posts when she was going and planning her surgery and I thought that was kind of neat. I am very fortunate that I have been able to help a lot of people by sharing my experience online. I deleted some of my content on Reddit because I was getting a lot of troll-like comments and people asking me for photos, which was not comfortable sending. And that was just kind of people not respecting boundaries. And I think I like the YouTube community a little bit more in that regard. But since then, the hospital that I had has also updated their catalog of photos so that I think may help a lot of people that are researching and getting similar surgeries. I am happy that I've met the people that I have and at this point my life has pretty much gone back to complete normalcy and I, now that I have completely recovered I'm grateful that I've been able to help so many people with my journey and being able to share and help ease people's stress because of what I put on the internet. At this point, I've been making videos on this channel for about seven months and I reached almost a thousand subscribers and I'm really happy for that. I don't think I have much else to add to this video. It's already been almost 14 minutes long. And I wanna thank everybody for watching who has been here since the beginning. All of the commenters that come back every video and these are the reasons why I make this video. I hope this video helps some people. And I'm going to see if there's anything else for me to add. And that will be that. I think that's everything. So thank you for watching this video. If you want to continue the conversation, you can check out the comments below. And I also stream video games and other nonsense on Twitch. Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. Or... 12 to 5 Eastern Time. My link for that will be in my channel description and my video description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you back next Monday. Bye for now.